Hi, I'm Jill Tisbury. This is Fire Glass. Um, and today we're going a little bit old school. We're going to talk about coasters, which is, uh, is why I've got my coffee as well. So you might want to grab a coffee and join us. Um, coasters, the reason we want to talk about them is there's a couple of things that we've been asked about lately. One is our tubes and twisties. So that's these things. These are um, a result of when we pulled Marini and the thing has gone hollow, so it's where the air's got in, we start to twist it. And when we twist it, we get this beautiful pattern on here. And so if you have a look at these over here, just going to move them so the camera can see. This is a tube and twisty coaster. Um, they're really popular on our workshops and you can see what happens. There's the actual section of uh, twisty that we've used. And these things here, when you full fuse them, the pattern flattens out and it looks absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, depending on the colours that you choose as well, you can mix and match it with all sorts of things. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Tube and twisties, uh, vitrograph confetti. And we're going to start with the six millimetre rule. Um, I know that's basic and a lot of people know about it, but a lot of people don't know about it. So we'll talk about the six millimetre rule. So we're going to use Tecta glass. This is clear Tecta. And um, as you're probably aware, it comes in various thicknesses. But the thickness we use most of all in the studio is three millimetres. So hopefully you can just see that on the edge there. So three millimetre Tecta. Now, if you full fuse, I'm just going to get my Sharpie here. If you full fuse three millimetre thickness glass, um, so when I say full fuse, that's temperatures around about 805 degrees centigrade. Then what happens is um, because of the substance that glass is, it wants to make itself six millimetres thick. So what it will try and do, bear with me, let's do this here, is it will pull upwards to the centre to become six millimeters thick. There you go. So you'll end up with like a little dome, but in order to do that, this is a three millimeter piece of glass. This is why you get beads that are round from a one centimeter square piece of glass. It will try and pull in from the sides, and it's what we call dog boning. So you'll actually get a piece of glass that ends up that shape. Straightforward, really. Um, so you don't want that for a coaster. Well, you might want it, but you know, they don't look very nice. So in order to stop that, what we do is we put two pieces of Tecta together. So it's already six millimetres thick. And all the glass will do then is round off at the edges. So if you look at this coaster here in comparison, you can see it's nice and rounded off at the edges. And that's all that will happen. So it won't pull itself up because it's already six millimetres. Job done. Fantastic. So now that we know that, we can actually start thinking about what we want to make with coasters. Now, the reason I've got this one out, um, I just wanted to talk about um, the different things that you could do anyway with your coasters. This one here has actually had things encapsulated within it. Now, as you're probably aware, Tecta is rough on one side and smooth on the other. Let's just move that to one side for a minute and you can probably see this better. So this is a rough side. This is a rough side. If you put those rough sides together, then what we're going to get, I don't know if you can see this, let me zoom into this, all these little tiny, tiny micro bubbles around here is what you'll get because of the little air pockets in between the two rough sides. If you don't want that, then that's a smooth side. That's a smooth side. Put the smooth sides together you'll still get some of the micro bubbles but you know you won't get as many as you would if you put rough sides together okay cool so we know about bubbles on the actual glass there the other thing um if you want to have more bubbles so if you look around the edge of this coaster you can see that there's some blue bubbles so i've actually used a little bit of blue powder anyway you really, if you're going to handle this stuff, this is copper oxide. You want a tiny amount of this. And you also want to put a mask on um, when you're working with it. I've had this five years, 
so uh, you can see and I, I do use um, this for making little bubbles but it, it's a black powder um, but what will happen is as it fuses it will create blue bubbles for you obviously copper oxide is what you tend to get in blue glass it will create blue bubbles so these bubbles around the edge here I've um, created with copper oxide um, you can also use bicarbonate of soda but you um, actually want to make sure you get tiny amounts of that because you can get big bubbles okay so that's the bubbles the other thing that's in here I don't know um, if you can see this really clearly there's two types of copper in here this copper these are just punched out with a, a paper punch little fish these three here are the banding that it's like a sticky uh, banding tape that you can put around it's a copper tape you put them around plant pots to stop slugs crawling up them and it's got um, like a plastic coating on it and for some reason that particular copper has this most beautiful bluey burgundy finish to it once it's fired this copper is actual copper sheet and this goes sort of rustic um, it also has blue overtones um, but that is punched out of uh, extremely fine copper sheet or copper foil um, this is silver so this is silver foil which tends to turn this sort of goldish color and then these are mica and this is why I wanted to show you this not sure if I wobble that around you might be able to see that a little bit you can probably see it if I do that maybe not it does stand up on it but there's a heck of a bubble there so this is what can happen if you use too much mica so this mica here was actually painted on uh, thin fire paper I think oh no it's painted on uh, acetate so that um, this when this fired off um, it it basically created a lot of oxygen so it created a bubble it's still fine because I can still use it as a coaster in the studio um, but you don't really want bubbles in your coasters so there you go we're going to make um, one of the coasters that will go with this set here so we talked about six millimeters when you look at these these are also probably about three millimeters tall so we don't need two pieces of glass we can get away with one and we can glue these little um, bits of tube and twisty on there so I've got my rubber and my bookmark there just to stop those from rolling away so you don't need a rubber and a bookmark <laughs> well you might do who knows these are our tubes and twisties so these are available on the website along with um, lots of different colors of vitrograph confetti Whew, look at that you can see there's all sorts of colors in there uh, some are thinner than others so you have to be careful when you're breaking these you need to wear safety glasses um, because if you've got really thin ones then they will fracture and they could fly all over the place some of the thicker ones easier to um, chop these are great for um, Christmas style coasters if you put them with red then you've got some beautiful Christmas sort of themed coasters so there's all sorts of things in here um, color wise that we could go with so you can see what I've done here I've mixed this with um, our Marini so you could uh, just put a little stripe of Marini um, in there the other thing you can do put that next to it is use a full uh, Marini coaster so that I know takes 75 grams of Marini so it can be quite an expensive <laughs> coaster um, but uh, it, it's really effective because the marini all opens out but um, tubes and twisties then what we're going to do is take one i'll show you how to cut them let's just move this pop this down here for a minute this color range that i've um, chosen to go with here is this sort of aqua and purple all you'll need to do let's move this out of the way get your piece back it's just stick your thumb or, or measure it these are 10 centimeter squares but if you stick your thumb there so that's the actual bit that you want I normally cut into a bottle um, because it's just easier it stops the um, bits flying around all over the place these are uh, mosaic nippers if you keep the um, wheels uppermost and have the tube and twisty in between 
to move my coffee out of the way. You can cut into um, the big old bottles that you get of frit or cut into here and just chop. And there you go. You've got your piece. Now this is uh, all the little bits that get either scrunched up in the bottom of the box or I actually bash them um, to uh, break them up. And this is the Cool Mix Vitrigraph Confetti. And I've also used this on one of my coasters. You can see here, that's the Cool Mix Confetti, which creates a, a beautiful mix as well. So don't throw away your scrap. Keep hold of your scrap. Okay, let's move these out of the way then. So. I've already chopped up um, a load of my stuff there. Is that going to stay there? Yeah, it's going to stay there. Let's move that out of the way. And then I've chopped some smaller ones here. So we've got our coaster, 10 millimeters square, smooth side or rough side. Makes no difference. I'm, I've got the rough side here because I don't mind a few bubbles. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on that end and then for here I'm going to put four strips of glue and then really um, it's a case of you deciding what colours you want to go where I'm not going to worry too much I will chop that end off because um, as you probably know if you've been fusing stuff on kiln shelves I've noticed there's a few people been chatting about this on the groups lately if you've got opal glass tends to stick to kiln shelves, whereas transparent glass doesn't stick as much. So you can either use thin fire paper to get over that, or you can uh, scrape your kiln shelf and, uh, and recoat it and just take these edges off. I'll do this into this box over here. I just don't want it to hang over too much over the edge of that, so we'll do that here. Sometimes if they're a bit gnarly, like that's got a few twists on it, you need a deeper bit of glue to actually get that. So I just want to hold it so that they don't roll everywhere when I take it to the kiln. So we will put that on. And this glue's obviously not going to go off. This is the um, glass tack gel. It's not going to go off for about 30 minutes. So you've got plenty of time if you don't like the order in which you put things. It's very gloopy as well. You've got plenty of time to move them around. I think I'll go there and actually finish off with that. Okay. Now, obviously, I could carry on um, and fill all of that and end up with a coaster looking like this. You can see there's a few micro bubbles in there as well. So that's a, a full tube and twisty. Or we can add our marini that we talked about here, or we could add our vitrigraph confetti. But for this one, all I'm going to do is put my lines the other way. So just on the edge, stop that falling off. And then these are going to go, just shove those over a little bit. These are going to go this way. It, there's lots of options. You can chop them up into small bits and have a uh, quarter going one way, a quarter going a different way. And then just, um, oh, lose my voice. That's not good, is it? Let's put a little bit more glue down here. Just rub that in the glue. Yeah, so there's lots of options as to the way that you can put things on here. You could put beads in with them. You could put shards in with them. But they're a very classy sort of looking coaster. They're quite abstract. And if you know the colour scheme that your friend has, you can match their colour scheme. Take them something like this. But it's always nice if you're going to show up with something a little bit handmade. And this looks professional. Job done. So that's my coaster. Really, really quick to do. Um, that's my coaster all put together and what we'll do now is um, pop that in the kiln 
and we'll fuse that so that um, we fuse it on a full fuse. For me, in my kiln, it's, uh, I think it's 805, but it's going to come up on the screen shortly, the whole schedule for that. Um, and that works in my Kiln Care kiln. Um, you might find yours is a bit hotter. I don't know. Just check what your full fuse is. You want them nice and flat like that. And then what I tend to do with mine is I will grind the edges. So I grind the edges on my lap grinder and then I tack fuse them so that it takes the, um, you know, roughness off uh, the ground edge because that would go sort of milky and uh, doesn't look very nice. Um, and then what I do is use these. You've probably seen these. You get these from hardware stores. I think you can get them on Amazon as well. But these are the little bump stops. And these do make the things look really professional. You can hear that much better. Um, so those little things, one in each corner, and then you've got your professional set of coasters. And all you need is a cup of coffee and a biscuit. Job's done. Hope you enjoyed that. See you on the next one.